what are we, what do we want to bring forth? What are we going to do? And then gate 55, that gate of faith then is, is the ability to hold that frequency of energy, of that passion, of that vision that we Mm -hmm. want to create and uh, to make it big, to really create beyond any limitation. Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, the human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Welcome to the Human Design High Podcast. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, Haley. How are you? Hi. Good afternoon. Good to see you. (laughs) Yes. Back in your place in Somerville. and We're no longer in the same domicile. Mm -hmm. Domicile? Nope. Hey, but at least it's not raining either. (laughs) (laughs) We have had an early spring here, haven't we? Oh my gosh, everything is so covered in pollen. Oh, I know. I had to hose off my car this morning. I just like, because I didn't have any more windshield wiper fluid and I thought, oh, I can't even see. Last last Sunday when we came back from y'all's house, mm-hmm. Presley put new fender flares on his truck and like shortly after we'd gone home, we rinsed off all the vehicles mm-hmm. and like an hour later they were covered in pollen again it was like are you serious oh it's it's bad it's very yellow pollen and everything my eyes feel gritty all the time and everything you touch you just feel dirty all the time (laughs) and uh Mm -hmm. it's it's real pleasant but i mean i think it'll probably stay pretty nice here but still um our local weatherman says don't count out another freeze. I doubt it. I mean, it doesn't, I don't think it froze here all, all winter, but it's definitely going to be cooler where you're going, but not too bad. But okay. So <laughs> we covered this week's weather, the weather, <laughs> the weather report. Do we have a traffic update? <laughs> <laughs> That's on the ones and threes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, we are going to do some sort of like report update here today. This is good segue here yeah about sort of a traffic report it's like a transit scene uh transits what's happening in the cosmos but in particular just some uh things that are happening this month that i came across uh, i believe it i guess it was just yesterday i follow astrologer carrie samuels and mm-hmm. i love her astrology reports and what she shared was so interesting to me, just knowing what's coming up in my life and in your life of, um, and Mm -hmm. just kind of how I've been feeling lately, this momentum feeling. It's really interesting of what's happening in the cosmos. So I thought I would try to synopsize what she was saying. I'm not an astrologer, Mm -hmm. but I will definitely share her information. And then I'll also, I guess in the show notes, I'll link directly to her video so you can hear it from her gifted mouth. (laughs) I just, she's better, but I have the, the input here of also human design gates Mm -hmm. and how these plants are transiting. But basically we're talking about big planets. So when, so because of the astrology component of human design, Mm -hmm. we know that, you know, we are affected on the daily by what's happening in the cosmos. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you can look at the astrology component, but then also there's going to be that deeper level with human design as far as what um, gates, what archetypes in our systems are being uh, activated and mm-hmm. brought to the forefront. So like, I think as we're recording right now, like the sun moved into gate 63, which is coming up. Your birthday's on Monday. You were born yes. on uh, March 6th uh, under that sun gate 63. So that is a energy that you carry, but also everybody else um, kind of feels the activated themes because we're all activated by the sun. We all experience Mm -hmm. the sun. And so those themes are there to contemplate as, as the sun moves through each gate throughout the, throughout the year. And it's a fun, fun way, but it's a, it's a good way to kind of just pay attention throughout year. And I think Mm -hmm. that's something we, have in the works that we're going to play around with later on future offerings is 
uh, physical products around transits would be fun. But anyways, yeah, it's just ideas coming out of the head gate there. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, yeah, so let's talk about some of these themes. And like I said, they're bigger planets yeah. and why they're important is because do you, do you, we did such a long time ago, we did an episode on planets, but okay. there's the inner <laughs> planets and the outer planets. So do you know how they affect us? in general in this, those two classifications? No. No, okay. no, I don't think so. The inner planets like, um, you know, uh, <laughs> the closest is Mercury, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Venus, Earth. Mars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they what they call like the inner planets? And those are more personal planets, meaning when planets are transiting through those um, uh the gates that they're transiting through. It's more mm -hmm. a personal theme. These are themes that affect us more on a personal level, individual level. Okay. Uh, and then when the bigger planets are moving around, since they are so big, they have these longer cycles in astrology of where they move through the different signs of the Zodiac. But mm -hmm. then also in human design, they, um, the planetary cycle. So it, it spends longer times in certain gates. So overall say like, you know, we, we know it takes our earth 365 days to move around the sun. Right. Whereas, um, roughly Give that's our year, <laughs> right. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like Saturn, um, has a, uh, cycle of, sorry, I should know that <laughs> every 29 years, you know, it takes Saturn to, to move around and, um, you know, some of the bigger plants like way out there, uh, I think it's Pluto, something like 90, hundred, didn't we say it was like a hundred and some years for Pluto to. I think 140 or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Uranus is like 84 years, you know, so I think yeah. that was like 92. So um, point being like some of these planets like Jupiter and Saturn, these bigger planets, they, they tend to affect us all collectively because the cycles are um, longer as they, they mm -hmm. move through. And so what we're talking about or what, you know, Carrie was talking about in this month's forecast is, is really about these bigger planets and what they're moving into and how that's going to impact us. Oh, mm -hmm. I love space. Huh? I love space. Space. <laughs> and our place in it. <laughs> that's right. So. So the first, so the first thing she talks about, because she also does numerology. So she was talking about how mm. in numerology, March is this March, March 2023 is a one month, meaning if you take three and plus two, plus two, plus three, you know, adds up 10. <laughs> I roughly know some very rough. Right. I'll trust you your math. It down, comes to one, right? Okay. So it's a one number and okay. one is all about, okay. um, initiation new beginnings it's it's the one oh. it's, the, it's the start it's the foundation uh, innovation change new things and so there's a theme here of in this month of a lot of things changing and bringing forth a lot of new transformations and the way we're going to see ourselves really okay so she's on um, march 7th saturn big old saturn mm -hmm. is yeah. going to be changing uh signs it's going to be moving in to pisces and so saturn is the planet of structures discipline mm -hmm. foundations everybody always associates saturn with the disciplinarian you know it's like the first when you start experiencing planetary cycles in your in your life saturn return is a big one that's how i should know return mm -hmm. 29 <laughs> years because around your you know 20 29th years when the themes around Saturn that you were born under wherever Saturn was, is going to mm -hmm. bring you lessons and things to, to learn. But it's also, uh, like I said, it's a planet of structure and boundaries and discipline. And so for the next three years, Saturn is going to be sitting in Pisces. Now Pisces is the sign and the Zodiac that rules dreams and intuition, compassion, oh. empathy. And so when Saturn changes signs in the Zodiac, moves from one to the other, <laughs> it changes societies and structures because, like I said, it's, it's mm -hmm. affecting all of us at the same mm -hmm. time. 
And this is where things get really exciting (laughs) (laughs) because it's been uh, in Aquarius since March of 2020, which was three years ago. Right. So what a time, (laughs) what a time, a lot of things started happening to all of us, right? March of 2020 and Aquarius Mm -hmm. at the time governs, you know, Aquarius or Saturn, Aquarius Aquarius. where it was. Okay. Yeah. It was Mm -hmm. in Aquarius, um, which is about technology, brotherhood, the societies on a whole. I mean, they say right now we're moving into this age of Aquarius, this whole next 400 years, we're going to be in this global cycle um, of these themes, but Mm -hmm. uh, Saturn specifically. So yeah, there was a lot of ways our society certainly changed in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Everything changed. We had a lot of restrictions. We had changes with technology and how we use technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, if you in March of 2020 already knew how to use Zoom, you were like a rock star genius, <laughs> right? <laughs> and everybody's like, have you, I mean, I remember getting on a call or trying to get three or four of my friends, they're all a little bit older than me, on a call, <laughs> on a video call. I mean, they didn't Jeez. even have Zoom. They didn't know what to do with it. So we tried it first with like, FaceTime or Google Hangouts, and it was a disaster. Like they, <laughs> one of them had an Android phone, the other two they couldn't figure it. Out. It was just, it was funny. And now, I mean, it is so common to be on Zoom, mm-hmm. and I, I love it. I love being able to see you, especially now mm-hmm. that you're going to be moving. I can see you more. I don't know why it feels any different. I mean, you are two and a half hours away now. It's not like you're here. I know. <laughs> I can feel you. But to um there goes that train of thought. The uh oh, to where now it's so common. I this is funny. I had a call with someone earlier today about being on her podcast. Mm-hmm. And as we were arranging a time to kind of meet and chat, first of all, you know, she had to ask, is it okay if we get on just a regular phone call to chat? And I thought, yeah, sure, that's fine. And I thought, how funny is that now we have to ask if we can just do a regular phone call instead of assume we're all going to jump on zoom um -hmm. or whatever you know but i mean that's how you i mean your whole job you were your job how you were hired was was going to be what was your job going to be well my first day of work was march 9th and uh 2020 2020 yep up in greenville moved we moved up there and i'm a project accountant so i've had like a week of training and then I was in the office for a month Mm -hmm. and then the office shut down and I've been working from home ever since. Mm -hmm. And it's just become the new normal. And so Mm -hmm. everybody's, you know, connecting in different ways now and using technology in different ways. So it's definitely, you know, you can see how it affected us there. And so now as it moves into a new sign, Pisces, um, Pisces, Saturn in Pisces is going to be about helping you build your dreams because Saturn structure building, helping Mm. form the structure and Pisces around dreams. So there's going to be lots of new ways that we build structures that help us support each other. Things that were kind of not so mainstream are going to become more mainstream. Also other themes that Pisces rules around mysticism. And this is what's exciting is around astrology, intuition, all these things started to become, Mm -hmm. are going to become even more mainstream, which is very exciting to me, obviously, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the field I'm in. But in also, uh, she was talking about how uh, themes around compassion for each other, how we're going to be taking care of each other more, themes around health and mental health and how it's going to be a time of when we get even more comfortable talking about our mental health needs and how to take care of ourselves. And so there's a lot of that expansion coming there, which is exciting. Use a lot more of all of that. We do, right? Yeah. (laughs) So not a very loving world right now. No, but it's interesting that you say that because, you know, one of the things that's coming up in in my world that I know about, which will be announced already by the time this airs, is that I'm going to be getting involved again 
in uh, campaigning for uh, Marianne Williamson and her bid for the Democratic nomination for president. She's challenging Joe Biden. And Mm -hmm. there's a lot of these themes throughout her body of work and what she wants to bring forth, too, is that this caring for each other, which Mm -hmm. used to be more present in the Democratic Party, but things got out of hand. But I'm not going to turn this into a political discussion now. I'm not we'll saying it for won't the next happen. episode. <laughs> I'm not saying we'll have in the future because there's a lot of important <laughs> issues. And it mm-hmm. is deeply ingrained in me. It's not ingrained, uh, influenced uh, a part of me is always had this lean towards, I don't want to say politics, but just uh, society as a whole of how we operate. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so anyways. We'll, we'll move on with that. But so with Saturn then moving into Pisces, mm-hmm. I thought looking at what gates that's going to be in. So when it moves into Pisces uh, on the 7th, it's going to, mm-hmm. it's already in gate 30. Uh, it's moving, okay. it'll be moving from gate 30 to gate 55. And those are both in the solar plexus, the emotional solar plexus there. So mm-hmm. they have some of those themes around, around uh, the, Emotional energy, but also the themes there in gate 30 is known as the gate of passion or clinging fire, it's called in uh, Mm. I Ching. And then gate 55 is the gate of um, faith or abundance. Mm. Mm -hmm. So so the gate 30, as it enters into it, it, like I said, it's it's about passion. So the themes there are about having the ability to sustain a dream an intention and a vision until you bring it into form. Cause it's, it's starting that energy of like mm-hmm. the experience of what you want to bring into form and to inspire others and inspire passion in others. And so I think that's very interesting at this same time, you know, what are we, what do we want to bring forth? What are we going to do? And then gate 55, that gate of faith then is is the ability to hold that frequency of energy of that passion of that vision that we mm-hmm. want to create and uh, to make it big to really create beyond any limitation just like having the faith that if you have the dream basically i have the dream <laughs> i have the passion what can we create mixed with mm-hmm. this theme of saturn providing that structure and Ooh. building. Isn't that exciting? That is exciting. I'm well, like, what do I want to do? <laughs> I know, exactly. So you you can ask yourself, that's a good quote, what do I want to do? Well, you could ask yourself a lot of these things like, what are you passionate about? And it's funny because the word passion, you know, there was always um, this idea that was a big buzzword several years ago about follow your passion. I know you still hear mm-hmm. that. And oh, yeah. I think for me, at least, it was always hard to kind of piece that apart. Like, oh, I'm passionate about because it makes it seem like it's yeah. something that has to be burning. Well, deep, yeah, because deep. I've heard people say like, oh, unlo- like if you can speak about something for hours, like that's what you're passionate about. I'm like, I can't speak about it. You're one like, you're single like, thing. You're I like, can't I'm a, wait. No. I'm a projector with an undefined throat. I can't do that. <laughs> I'll be like, exhausted. I don't have a topic that I can speak about for hours. I'm like. Yeah. Something like that. Or does anyone I I also struggle. Yeah. Does anybody want to hear us go on for hours? (laughs) I know. But yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. It's like for me, it was always I always felt like it was um it had to be like one thing. You know, like it Mm -hmm. has to be a skill or an activity or a job or something, right? But I guess you could even ask Mm -hmm. yourself, what does that even mean? So if you ask the question like, what are you passionate about? I think not limit yourself. To just one thing, you know, what, Mm -hmm. because that's also something that I'm playing around with is I have, I can feel myself wanting to go what seems like to me in different directions. It feels like Mm -hmm. two different areas of my life converging. So I'm talking about this work maybe with the campaign, but also this human design work. And I -hmm. love both. And I've decided I don't need to compromise and I don't want to compromise. The universe knows what's in my heart of what I really want to do. And it's leading me there if I can just Mm -hmm. back off the reins a little bit and trust a little bit, have faith, gate 55, Mm -hmm. and see what shows up. And 
put the intention out there. Well, I'm passionate about both things. This is what I want. So, okay, universe, let's do it. Make it it happen. (laughs) Yeah, let's make it happen, right? So if you're not feeling that way, um, you could be asking yourself, well, why is that? Where is it in my life that I have lost my passion for certain things? Or am I maybe compromising on things that I really am passionate about or at least interested Mm -hmm. in just for the sake of what others, I don't know, society, just have a little, have a little combo with yourself around that. These are good journaling ideas. And I do think journaling, actually writing things out. I know your generation, not so much writing, but. I love writing. Like you do. I would prefer. Well, I don't, I don't know if saying I love writing is the correct description. I prefer pen and paper over mm-hmm. typing okay. or even writing on an iPad, like give me actual <laughs> pen and paper. Yeah. It's, it's, it is hard for me sometimes because I do, I feel that it, there is more of a, um, a, it's not a meditative quality, but a more open intuitive quality when you're actually pen to paper mm-hmm. and um, there's some automatic writing sometimes, but then it's also, slower sometimes for me. I don't know. It's like if I need to take notes and write some stuff down, even though you might remember better writing it, sometimes typing Mm -hmm. is faster, but because if I go really fast with my writing, nobody can read it. Not even myself. Oh, (laughs) the same, but also I'm not a fast typer. So typing is not better for me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Another thing to Uh, contemplate here is when we're talking about dreams and having this passion and this vision and this faith and everything is to ask yourself if there maybe is a dream or a passion or a vision that you've have or have had, but you're avoiding like maybe putting energy to it or really dreaming into it because you're afraid it won't come true and guilty as charged (laughs) usually. Mm -hmm. But this is a good time to have those things supported because the uh, universe is lining up and saying, okay, let's do this. Let's build something. What do you want to do? Are you willing to have a vision, have the faith and move on? So that's that first part. So uh, then, so then she also talks about on March 12th, um, Chiron, which we have a whole episode on Chiron, the wounded healer, which Mm -hmm. is actually Mm -hmm. Chiron is not a, it's not a planet. It's a uh, planetoid. (laughs) Yeah. It's like an asteroid planetoid. Yeah. It's big enough. I don't know. I know it's not a planet. And we know we're not. Remember that. We're also not astrophysicists to know anything about it. Absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but anyways, and so on the 12th, Chiron and mm-hmm. Jupiter are going to meet up. This happens uh, quite often, but they're going to meet up in Aries and in the sign of Aries. And so Chiron, when we talked about before, is a sign of the wounded healer. It's kind of the mm-hmm. wound that informs you really your your whole life of kind of, it's kind of a theme that you keep revisiting throughout your whole life is even when you progress and you move, it's just something that, because once you really deeply heal it, integrate it, it becomes your greatest strength and it becomes the thing that you're here to help others with. So that's the wounded healer type, fix the wound, fix yourself, help fix others, fix. That's a loose term, but anyways. So, Mm -hmm. and then Jupiter is the uh, planet that represents expansion and and the gifts that you receive once um, you do meet your challenges and meet, you know, go through this healing because Saturn's also paired mm-hmm. up a lot with not Saturn, Jupiter and Saturn. They always say, if you look at your Saturn placement, what is your challenges? Jupiter is the um, rewards that you reap yes. once you master those, right? Okay. So I recall so that. Mm-hmm. That's good. So there's kind of a little theme here. And so they're meeting up in Aries, which is the first sign in the Zodiac. Did you know that? <laughs> so you said no. So you said that Chiron and Jupiter are meeting up. Yeah, yeah. Did I say it wrong? I don't know. But yeah, I don't recall. But I just wanted to get it straight. Yeah, Chiron and Jupiter. <laughs> we're talking about Jupiter and Saturn. <laughs> okay, oh, Chiron Saturn. and Jupiter. 
Yeah. <laughs> so Aries is, you know, this fiery energy. It's the the baby, quote unquote, of the, the Zodiac because it's the first sign in the Zodiac. So it is about... Oh. Courage, again, passion, being yourself, getting into action. It's a very action-oriented sign. Very much, if you think about a very young energy, this kind of bravado almost. I, I always think of like the young, dumb, you know, take on male fighter. Like, ah, I can take on the world. <laughs> That's what I think of Aries. So Chiron being in Aries is mm-hmm. the core self or core wound around being authentic, being yourself. And Mm -hmm. it stays in Aries for quite some time because I was born in, um, my Chiron was in Aries and it was in Aries for like six or seven years, I think, at least when I was born. I think it's probably that now if it's in Aries again, it stays in Aries a while, but then also Jupiter is going to be there. So with this wound around being authentic. It's like where you're playing small, where you're not showing up, where you, there's usually been some kind of wound early in life. If you're born under this Chiron and Aries, where you felt that it wasn't safe to be yourself, show your authentic self, be your creative self, do all these things. There's a lot of themes there around that. And so this uh, meeting of these two signs is also saying to you, where have you been playing small? And this is for everybody. Where have you been mm-hmm. hiding? Maybe where have you not been showing up completely as yourself? Didn't feel safe. Where do you need more courage to to show up as yourself and put yourself out there? So with Jupiter also being there, that's encouraging you to like look at these things and be like, it's time to look at them, trust trust the universe that if you look at this and embrace it and kind of face your fears here a little bit, that there is a reward on the other side for you to, to be yourself. It's part of this foundation that's being built for these dreams that you have to be sustained mm-hmm. is to, there's a big key component here of of your authenticity being a part of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on this day also, well, not on this day, it's for quite some time. Chiron is in gate 21. Mm -hmm. So gate 21 is gate of Mm -hmm. of self-regulation and it's got the challenge here of learning to, to let go, you know, to, to trust to take care of yourself, learn to regulate yourself, but then also to learn that you don't have to control everything so tightly. Again, there's that having the faith, having the trust, having the passion, Mm -hmm. having the vision. You can start to see the theme here, correct? (laughs) So um, on that day, on the 12th, around that time, you'll be Mm -hmm. feeling a lot of this, this energy, this push of And you may be pushed into situations where you are kind of forced to show up as yourself, as you really want to Mm. and be yourself. And it's going to feel uncomfortable or scary. And it feels a little uncomfortable, scary, just thinking about it. (laughs) Like, oh, what could happen? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But to trust that this is just, if you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation around that time, and you mm-hmm. feel that you need to speak up or do something that feels important to your soul of who you are, to trust that you're being shown this situation again, this theme again, to show you mm-hmm. where it is you need to to heal that, to work through that, and that it's mm-hmm. it's for a purpose. There's something on the other side there for you. So just don't be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So a big, exciting time in March is the spring equinox, equinox, sorry, is the spring equinox. (laughs) Uh, Oh, you know, it's really exciting around that 12th too here in the States, I think is the daylight savings. Daylight savings. Yay. Um, Which isn't astrological at all. That's a dumb man-made thing, but still (laughs) very excited to gain that. I saw the, the. Congress put forth another bill to make daylight savings permanent. 
I know. It's, it's so silly, though. But, you know, they'll do that, and then each state's going to have to go through it. It's so dumb. We'll never know what time it is in this country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyways, so the spring equinox, so March 20th, mm-hmm. and the uh, astrologically speaking, this time in the year is when the Zodiac starts over. Mm-hmm. So it's the beginning wow. Of the zodiac wheel. So we have the Gregorian calendar that puts us on January 1st. And then we have, well, in the human design, we we're back uh, at the end of January, I think it was. And so you're looking at me like, hmm? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I'm sure we talked about that. Yeah, yes. Oh, yes. I think we talked about, we didn't talk about it. I did in the episodes you were on. <laughs> that would be why. That was one of those <laughs> bonus episodes uh, without Haley. Uh, so for centuries, um, people mm-hmm. around these equinoxes have always said that this is when, um, spiritually speaking, the veil between heaven and earth is thinned and that, you know, right. the intuition is heightened and this is happening. Right. There's, um, uh, there is a new moon right Ooh. within that time frame. And on the next day, there's, there's a new moon in Aries and new moons are also about new intentions and new, you know, things coming into play. So it's a really impotent. (laughs) It's really impotent. I would say incredibly important (laughs) and potent time (laughs) for intention setting of your new dream. So this again, more energy Mm -hmm. here of like, of these dreams that you want to, to bring forth. So it's like a lot of things lining up. Yeah, there is. And um, so the new moon is going to be in Aries at zero degrees, which Carrie says that's a very important and potent time because it's at the very beginning of this uh, zodiac wheel, but also this sign and everything. So it's all things lining up. So on that day, the 21st, the moon, you know, can move through more than one gate in a day because mm-hmm. it moves mm-hmm. pretty fast and um, i've talked about it's always we in a different spot in the sky it goes through all 64 gates for the months so yeah but one of the themes here is one of the gates kind of the midpoint is going to be gate 36 which is another one coming off mm-hmm. of the solar plexus up towards the throat and it's the gate of exploration and this is all about again because it's from the continuation of the gate 30, which we were talking about the passion. Mm -hmm. And then this goes up to the 36, that line of energy, it's collective energy. Uh, It's part Mm -hmm. of the sensing circuit. So it is about feeling and sensing. Um, Mm -hmm. And this gate is all about experience, the exploration of like jumping, you know, getting into things to see Mm -hmm. what happens basically. And there's a challenge here with this gate. It's, to not get into things and react to things out of just sheer boredom, just, you know, to have Mm. an experience. (laughs) But optimally it's again, this ability to have that vision that's coming through wanting to sustain it and having that emotional energy because it's again in the solar plexus Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, to bring it into form when the time is right, because solar plexus, emotional energy, timing because waves right Gotta ride the wave ride the wave and then it's this energy of this 36 is pointing up towards the throat which is getting mm-hmm. it into form so right. powerful intention setting again here around that time of energy you know setting the intention the vision what you want and then knowing around the timing is right does that make sense Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very exciting, all yes. this stuff. I mean, I've always been biased to March, but like now it's even better. Oh, that's true. It's even better. New and improved. <laughs> now with 55% more <laughs> enthusiasm <laughs> and excitement. <laughs> so here's a great day that has importance in your life as well. On March 27th. Mm-hmm. Oh. Tell everybody what's happening on the 27th. (laughs) You mean they don't know? No. (laughs) That's when we move into our new apartment. 
that's when your new apartment will be ready. Yes, in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, on the twenty seventh, Pluto, the um, sub Pluto, hey, will be moving into the sign of Aquarius. So mm-hmm. Pluto mm-hmm. is also a planet that is known as the great transformer. Pluto himself was the lord of the underworld, and so. Oh, yes. There's a lot of revolution built into this, uh, the themes around Pluto transforming. When you think transforming societies and as a whole, because again, that planetary cycle is like is big. big. Yeah. So anyhow, so there's a lot of theme around revolution, around overhauling. I don't think there's going to be a revolution in your apartment, but, but there's going to be a lot of I hope changes. not. <laughs> But what's interesting is um, it says Pluto stays in a sign for 20 years. And we're going to get a taste of what it looks like, what the next 20 years are going to kind of be like, because it's going to be from March 27th to beginning of June, I think June 11th, it's going to be in the sign of Aquarius. Then it's going to go back into Capricorn for a little bit. But for our purposes now of what we're, yeah, planets retrograde. So, um, I still don't understand that part, but okay, just accept it's, it. Just, just go with it. Just go with it. I'll just go with it. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're not going to explain that right now, or can no. I perfectly explain it? So we're just going to say it is, and um, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> just deal with it. So, what's exciting about this time towards the end of uh, March, with all these other themes going on? around change and building dreams and new ways of doing things and sustaining a vision for a new future, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Revolutions happen. So the last time being in Aries, I mean, excuse me, Aquarius, Pluto. Yes. was the tail end of the American Revolution. It was during the Industrial Revolution, the French (gasps) Revolution. Like these were all things that were happening during that cycle. Of when Pluto okay, was Pluto. in Aquarius. So a new revolution is coming. And I, I feel this to my very being. There is a new industrial revolution coming on, a technology, a more of a quantum revolution, I believe. And I think what we've just seen in the last month and a half of this popularity of this new AI and chat GPT and all these things coming out that everybody's freaked out about, but it's a good time for it to come about too, right? Because Saturn's like, okay. We're going to structure this. We're going to figure this out. We're going to use this to um, the advantage of everyone because that's a lot of the themes here since they are collective themes Mm -hmm. uh, with Saturn in in Pisces and everything else. It's like it is about the collective. It's about all of us learning to build this or seeding this vision of this new world that we want to be a part of to help build. Mm -hmm. And what's really exciting is that the sign of Aquarius, what we're talking about here with Pluto, also is a sign that um, rules the power of the individual, of being different, of diversity. And I think it's so cool that it teaches us that our strength comes through our diversity, Mm -hmm. which is so crazy to me that, Mm -hmm. that people don't get this. You know, that these people that these, let's just call it what it is, these races, white supremacists, these people that are afraid of change, of like mixing things up and trying to keep everybody in these separate containers is like, Mm -hmm. I mean, science just shows you that if you, if you try to like, this be blunt about it, biology shows you in animal kingdom and human, whatever, if you keep you know, dipping in the same gene pool, <laughs> it does not turn out well. Um, Look it, at all of the monarchs over in Europe, the old yeah. monarchs. Yeah, our health, our physical health comes from diversity of the gene pool, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think anybody that lives in a bubble, like a literal bubble, you go out in the world, you're exposed to different things, you you, you can't handle it. Your system can't handle it when you're just mm-hmm. this you know, um, homogenized, <laughs> protected, single little Probably. cell, right? 
<laughs> so, yeah, so this movement, this huge planet, this this planet of transformation is showing us that there is strength in our diversity, that individuality is to be celebrated, our uniqueness, we need to celebrate our uniqueness and our differences, and this I is mean, what, yeah. No two people are the same. No. Literally, no, not the Even, same. I don't know. And even if they happen to be twins and they were born so close that they have technically the same human design chart, it's going to be different in how they express it. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, the chart is one thing. It doesn't mean that's who you are and you're like stuck in this framework. That means this is how you were influenced. This is how you carry yourself through life. But It's the tools you can work with. Yeah. Life informs you. you. Mm -hmm. Your interactions inform you more than anything else. And so, yeah, so it's exciting that seeing that our diversity and our individual, individuality, I should say, is what's going to help build this new society. And it's kind of fun to think about. So what's really interesting is on the 27th, if you're looking at March 27th as a state mm-hmm. that it moves, Pluto is in yes. gate 60. Gate 60 is at the bottom of the chart. It's on the top of the root center. It's the beginning of that. uh, Well, it's the gate of conservation and limitation. Mm -hmm. It is the beginning of that pulse of mutative changing energy because it's mutative circuitry. It's individual circuitry. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, this is the gate that I said, conservation limitation. So it shows you, or it's the themes around what do we need to hold on to? What do we need to change? What do we need to bring forth that conservative energy of like, there's value in some of these older structures, there's Mm -hmm. value, not structures, but there's value in things that we've learned, what can we bring forth? And so it's having a gratitude approach to um, stay in a sense of gratitude as this energy is moving, because you want to bring the good things with you. Don't Don't throw throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, that poor baby. (laughs) Poor baby. And so there's also um, in this gate, this expression, the optimal expression here is the ability to find the blessings uh, in the transformation, going through the process. It's it's about optimism. Like I said, having that, you know, having a sense of gratitude. So as you move forward, you're hopeful. There's optimism there and to know how to mm-hmm. focus on what's working instead of focusing on what's not working. So having that vision again of what do we want to build? What do we want to create? And um, yeah, so this this month is like showing the us heavy a whole new, yeah, a whole new way, a new world is opening and, and it can be scary and it feels a little scary. But um, if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling resistant or scared or you feel that you're pu- being pushed forward a little bit and you're not ready, you're ready. <laughs> Just dip your toes in the water a little bit at a time mm-hmm. because, you know, we're all feel we're, ev- the thing is, is we're all going to be feeling this, but there's such a small percentage of us on the planet that know that this is what's happening because mm-hmm. we are, I feel we are, if you're listening to this, if you're into any of this in any way and you feel any of this stuff, it's like, part of the collective that's here to help usher this in that we're the ones that are here to help hold these visions and sustain them so that when everybody else is like getting on board, it's there for them. We'll hold the door open for them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, come on in guys. Yeah. So I think from a human design perspective, I just, I just think it's so interesting how, it's really feeling this surge and this push in the last couple of years uh, that human design has really gone like exponentially uh, quickly fast into people's awareness. I mean, it's been Uh hanging around since 87. Right. But I mean, that's when it really hit full force in my life was 2020. I'd heard about it before, but it didn't feel this. It didn't feel the same. It didn't feel the Uh same at all it still felt kind of murky and clunky and like what unworkable. Yeah. 
And then when it came around again in 2020, suddenly everything, it's just like, it is like a quantum leap in our evolution, I think, of all the the people that are sharing this information and embracing this information. Not only the ones that are just sharing it, but the ones like um, people that just want to know about themselves and using this as a tool for everybody out there listening, whether you feel like you want to teach this to others, or if maybe you um, are in some kind of profession like coaching or, you know, therapy that you want to work with clients with this information, or you're a parent and you want to help your children. I mean, it's just because, and I think it's so cool that this energy is even more going to be supported of this is going mainstream. This is something that people are going to be just suddenly more open to Mm -hmm. because it works. (laughs) Like it doesn't, you know, you don't have to believe anything about it if you just are open to it. It's happening whether you, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. If you're just open to it and you say, well, What would it hurt for me to, you know, if this thing says that I'm a generator, what would it hurt to maybe spend a couple of days just responding to things instead of trying to push things through? You know, what if I just as a projector just kind of focused on what I want to focus on and what enriches me and what I know I'm good at and just rest and relax and, and hold faith that I'm going to be recognized by the right people at the right time for when it's right for mm-hmm. me. I mean, it's just like so many possibilities here, but <laughs> anyways, I think I got off track. But anyway, so I think it's cool that we have the tools of human design to help mm-hmm. us through these planetary cycles and really make the most of it and fucking knock it out of the park. <laughs> yeah. Home run. But, but I will say, I'm going to put my little plug in here. Because I just, I just, I feel very strongly about it. Mm-hmm. If these things As resonate you with you, if you are someone who really is ready to see society as a whole, help us make these changes. I thoroughly encourage you to not disengage if you're in America with what's happening in the political spectrum right now. Pay attention to Marianne Williamson and her campaign and what she has to say because. Whether you are a independent, Democrat, Republican, none of the above, it doesn't matter. She has a mes- message that I know will resonate and she has a way to lead through it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very excited about being a part of her campaign again and hopefully getting more ears to hear her message because it's also the message of we the people here in mm-hmm. the United States We, the people, have the power. We've been led to believe we don't have the power to make changes, to take care of ourselves, to live a good life, to have a decent living, you know, all these things that we, America used to have, which we don't anymore. And um, we, the people, as individuals, standing up, using our voices and joining together is how this is going to change. It's not going to change through the hands of a few people at the top, telling the rest of us what we need and giving us little crumbs, a little taste. Trickle down does not work. Yeah. But never actually giving us what we need. And so that's where I'm going to leave that is that we're being called into our individuality, our individual power being used together. And this is something you want to pay attention to um, as we move through the next uh, year and a half for the um election cycle. But anyways, so I'm excited about that. Okay. So, (laughs) all right, everybody, it's time to be journaling, asking yourself these questions about your dreams, your visions, uh, what's holding you back. What do you want to let go of? What do you want to bring into um, uh, fruition? Where where are we going? Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we'll just leave that there for today. And Once again, we thank you all for listening. I hope you found some value in today's episode. And if you did, don't forget, I always remind you in the outro, but people probably don't listen. Like, Give us a nice little rating or review on iTunes is the best way to do Mm -hmm. that, which I can see most people are usually listening on iTunes. 
And it does make a difference, which I was thinking about this today, Haley. I feel bad. Mm. I got to start doing this more. I was thinking your favorite podcasts. Have you ever left a rating or review? No, because I listen on Spotify. Oh, well, you could go over to iTunes and do that. I listen on Spotify too, but I have left, especially if they're smaller podcasts that you know is not, I mean, like my, one of my favorite ones to listen to, Smart List. They don't need my review. <laughs> Most they know they're good. They're things. at the top of the charts. <laughs> but, you know, uh, this this episode is um, episode 49. So hey. I'm coming up almost on a year. That's consecutive episodes. And that's one thing that helps, you know, get you ranked better for more people to Most see your podcasts content. podcasts do not make it this far. So Yeah. And it's consistency. And there's definite steady growth. And I'm so excited. And I'm so grateful to everyone that's listening who has been listening, whether you're new or if you've been around for a while. I mean, literally, it really does. It does fill my heart up because... <laughs> It just it just feels really good to know that people are listening and they're coming back and they're listening more and they're sharing the message. It's getting to more people. And the way to get to more people, more ears is by rating and reviews. So mm -hmm. if you would take the time to do that, that would be great. It would really help uh, get more people learning about themselves and how they can contribute through their own individual unique yeah. gifts. So. Yeah. Okay, exciting That's my plug for today. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll uh, catch you in the next episode. So bye for now, Haley. Bye. Well, you made it all the way to the end of today's episode, so you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode, and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening.